This Week in the Boardroom, brought to you by NYSE Governance Services, Corporate Board Member, along with Governance Knowledge Partners, the Center for Audit Quality, and Grant Thornton, and contributing partners, National Investor Relations Institute, and the Society of Corporate Secretaries and Governance Professionals. Welcome to this edition of This Week in the Boardroom. I'm T.K. Kerstetter, Chairman of NYSE Governance Services Corporate Board Member, and it's my pleasure to welcome you to the show. We are going to spend today talking about uh, diversity, uh, board diversity, and is the needle moving? And joining me to discuss this topic is Mary Ann Cloyd, who's the leader of PwC's Center for Board Governance. Mary Ann, it's a pleasure to have you back. Thanks, TK. Great to be here. And PwC joined with corporate board member uh, and others, but PwC was the lead sponsor. Uh, over a year ago, we held um, the Moving the Needle event, which was an attempt for us to bring a very bright light to the uh, idea of board diversity and really sort of debunk the theory that um, there wasn't uh, enough um, uh, qualified diverse candidates. And uh, we were pleasantly surprised by the turnout of having some 150 candidates that actually had been recommended or vetted by um, senior CEOs, chairmen, mm -hmm you know, heads of nominating governance. And we brought in um, company nominating governance chairs and actually tried to create some magic, if you would, in the room. Um, so um, you were there, you were, you helped this process and lead it. So first of all, I'd like your thoughts before we sort of look forward on what happened. Tell us about your thoughts relative to what you observed uh, last year. Yeah, TK, I thought it was, a great event and again I when, I when I look back and when when you came to us about being one of your your major sponsors I think what to me what was very appealing is that it was an action oriented event so it was an event designed to accomplish something and as you just said your way of doing that was to make sure that the, the people that were there had essentially been vetted so they'd been vetted by by a chair a CEO and one of the things I remember so vividly is the energy that was in the room. So, you know, almost from start to finish, I mean, you had clearly just, you know, just great energy and enthusiasm for people really wanting to make a difference. And so it was, um, so I think it's really great that you're, we're having this discussion today, some, you know, year and a few months later to, to see where that's, where that's gone. Well, we, we we both wanted to make sure. We were very curious on on whether we could move the needle yeah. or not. And it's sort of sad in a way because I think we came to the conclusion at the end when we look back at this event one year later that while we had had some success and I think there might have been, you know, um, 10 or 11 people in the end that actually got board seat opportunities out of that, I think that we had the idea that we could make a bigger impact, you know, relative to that. Um, so... It, well, but you know, TK, because you know me, and I'm pretty much the v very optimistic person, and I had a very wise HR person make a comment to me a few years ago about culture change. And her comment was, you know, Marianne, just never forget that culture has changed one person at a time. And I think that is part of where we are with, with you know, building more diverse boards, is it's gonna happen, you know, one board, one person at a time. Well, how do you, when, when you look that, when we look at the last couple of years, there's really been very little statistical progress, you know, very with, little. with um, uh, diverse candidates on board. And then, you know, our event even r reflected that you know, as well, although again, we feel very good about the bright light that we brought and, and everyone would say that there's more discussion about diversity than there ever has been before. No question. But no how question. do you sort of analyze the initiatives in this space and the fact that, you know, we see people discussing it, but we don't see any statistical change in any of the numbers, which is ultimately what we're 
you know, what we're looking for? Well, I think the one thing that has changed is that I do think the discussions around it are changing, TK. So, it, it, and the discussions seem to be happening in a more serious way across the board in terms of a lot of focus, a lot of focus in the U.S., a lot of focus around the world that why isn't it happening faster? And, and you know, you know the statistics well. There's, you know, there's only so many board seats that come up in any given year. You know, boards are getting, boards are getting smaller. There's less public companies. Directors are staying longer. So you add all of that together. Um, and, and so I think that there's a relatively limited number of spots. And I, th and I don't think we've broken the cycle of how board seats really get filled. And you know, as you know, when we've done our, our surveys, that you know, when you ask directors where they go to look for new board members, the number one place is still to fellow board members. So I think all of that is, you know, factors into why it's not changing quicker. Well, one of the challenges both for, for women and minorities is that companies want somebody with experience as well. And, mm -hmm. and so, and you I know think what I always say, TK, everybody has to have their first board. Right. <laughs> uh, and it puts the, uh, that group at a severe disadvantage if it that's does. the case. Because how do you get does. how do you get your first board if nobody's willing to absolutely give you the chance? So. Well, you mentioned globally. Globally, there is a lot happening, okay? M more than in the United States, we're seeing uh, quotas and mandates actually pop up. Europe is a great example. There's discussion in Australia about this mm -hmm. as well. So we're seeing globally people taking uh, much more uh, affirmative action than I would say will mm -hmm. probably ever happen in the United States. There's a a lot of people are opposed to the idea of quotas. Um, us, you know, at, at corporate board members as well, we don't really think that that's the answer um, to this. But, um, so while we're not seeing anything sort of happen on that level federally, it, it is interesting that we are seeing pockets, mm -hmm. uh, and I never thought this might happen, but we're seeing pockets that are sort of taking control of this on their own. California, uh, California uh, passed, I think it was called Re uh, Resolution 62, which sort of said, you know, this is what we think is the guidelines that should be for companies that are within California as, as far as having uh, women and minorities on board. A and uh, they, they don't have any hard and fast um, way to govern that, meaning any, any ramifications if you don't meet that. Um, uh, interesting in Philadelphia, the mayor said, uh, you know, if you're going to do business in Philadelphia, you're going to have to mm -hmm. submit, uh, w you know, why you have a diverse management and diverse board. So it's interesting that while we may not see something on a national basis, we may see these pockets pop up. And one of the things we do know is that shareholders, index funds, you know, a lot of no people are, are putting pressure on board divis diversity for 2014. So. Um, what do you yeah. see happening? Well, I, you know, and, and I think that what, to me, what you're describing, it's putting a spotlight on it. And, you know, and with that spotlight, I think what that may drive is increased focus by boards. So increased focus as they look to fill those seats. You know, I was talking to a colleague of mine outside the U.S. who was talking about um, you know, some of the ro rules that are being discussed and, and proposed. And I love the way he described it. He said, you know, what we have over here, and this was actually in Denmark, he said, what we have over here is what he called soft regulation. And, and, and he defined the soft regulation is, is nobody's saying you have to do this, but it's a comply or explain. And, and again, to me, what that does, and when you talk about some of what we're hearing, you know, as I always say, the voices of the shareholders, the voices of you know, some of the proxy advisory firms, again, it puts that spotlight on it. And I think you know, when you put focus on something is when you begin to see things change. Well, we've always um, pushed for diversity of thought. You know, that's always been the I main. I agree completely. That's always been the main reason that we've felt that there needs to be more diversity, you know, and there needs to be more representation of people's markets as it looks like on the board. You and I have talked about many times that people look at people like themselves, so that yeah. makes it uh, more of a challenge 
Um, but one of the things that, to me, needs to happen is when you see people attain the status of CFOs or CEOs of public companies, invariably that board seat offer seems to come yeah. right after that. Well, we know we've got very small percentage of minorities and women in those roles. To me, that's the challenge. And how do we get how do we get more people into those roles, which will automatically transfer to board seats? You know, and it, it, it's interesting because I think what you're. I mean, I guess, I guess I have a few thoughts on what you just said. And once is what you're describing, or the, or the way we started the conversation with what's happening in the, in the boardroom is certainly the conversation that's been going on in you know, virtually all aspects of corporate America for a long time now, I mean, including in my profession. And I think that you're, again, I've certainly in my own industry and in my own firm see where we've made real progress. And so real progress in terms of getting, you know, women into senior positions. And I think that the way that has to happen in a company is probably no different than the discussion we're having around the board is there's got to be a, a deliberate and conscious effort to make sure that you're giving women the opportunities, that you're getting them in the right positions, that you're providing them the support and counsel when they get there to be successful. And, and again, and I just came back to, to women because I think that's how you stage the question, but I don't want to lose sight of, to me, what we're really talking about is diversity in its, in its broadest sense. You know, and, and TK, to bring it back to that, you know, one of the other things, and you and I have talked about this before when we talk about getting someone in that first board position. I, th I think that, that, that the nominating and governance committees, the lead directors, the people who are looking for those individuals also need to be sure that you focus on just getting the right people. And I think you may have some, and we probably saw some of that at Moving the Needle, some of the people who are extraordinarily qualified to be on a board but don't necessarily hold that title of CEO or CFO. Because what you're looking for is, you know, bright, talented, seasoned and experienced individuals who can ask the right questions. You know, that's what it's about in the boardroom. It's about asking the right, you know, it's asking the right questions and then ha having, you know, holding management accountable to re being responsive. Well, we know today there's a finite number of sitting CEOs that can serve. Uh, boards have asked them not to, you know, serve on too well, many understandably outside. Understandably so. There's, right. it's, it's, it's a real job being on a board. Yeah. You know? So um, you have to look at talent other places and too. that's what we were trying to showcase. So um, just so I don't let you off too easy um, <laughs> today, the $64,000 question um, is what would you do t to sort of change the pattern? You know, what, what, what can we do that hasn't been done that possibly could affect the numbers in a positive way? I think where I would start is by telling boards that they really need to focus on their own succession planning. You know, we talk an awful lot in the boardroom about CEO succession and the focus that boards put on CEO succession, but I don't think that most boards put that same level or pay that same level of attention to how do we plan our own succession. And when you've got that, that own, when you're doing that succession planning, it's being mindful that, you know, how do we build a board going forward that really is diverse in thought, that we're bringing in people that will prov provide that diversity of thought. You know, I think for, for some TK, it may mean that they need to get out of their comfort zone a little bit. And so the comfort zone being that, oh, we've got a board seat, gee, the easiest thing we can do is go find a, you know, a CEO who's already on another board and they've got the absolute perfect profile and we know them and it'll all be great. So to get outside that comfort zone a little bit, to, to, to look for that right person, I think, and I think it's to me, it really is about looking at the person and not the title. And then when you find those people, again, it's bringing them in with support. We talk about, you know, you and I have talked a lot about board renewal, um, board performance. So I think it, that boards should be truly honest with themselves about whether or not all the, the directors they have are still 
filling that role in a meaningful way. And that just because you're sitting on a board doesn't necessarily mean that it's, it should be a, a guaranteed seat. So really to have thoughtful evaluations within the boardroom and then leadership. And then to the extent you have a board where you, there needs to be a switch, that leadership really being willing to step up and deal with it. Well, great advice. And uh, Mary Ann Cloyd, it's a pleasure to have you join us and us to look back and moving the needle and look forward. And I also want to thank uh, PwC, who has been very so, supportive and sure. corporate board members' board diversity efforts. So I thank you for that. And that will conclude this edition of This Week in the Boardroom. We hope you enjoyed the show. We'll be back again next week where we take on another critical topic that will help you be a better board member and committee member. So we'll see you then. Join us again next week for This Week in the Boardroom. Brought to you by NYSE Governance Services Corporate Board Member. Along with Governance Knowledge Partners, the Center for Audit Quality, and Grant Thornton and contributing partners, National Investor Relations Institute, and the Society of Corporate Secretaries and Governance Professionals.